I did have some questions that were sent, so let me go do that first. Forgot about those. See where this one came from. This is from 155 also. Okay. And we got several questions. Uh, let's see. Open this up a little bit so we can see the questions. Five point one, five point one, that's fifty seven, fifty one, so let's do fifty one first. All right, try this one. Write this one down. This is 72 and 656. Find the least common multiple, I mean the greatest common divisor and the least common multiple. We'll start with the, these few questions today and move into 5.3, which is fractions. Hmm? 72 and 656. I'll write it. 72 and 656. Glad you could make it. Hope the lunch was good. Just come on in whenever you finish. That's fine. Hope you got enough for you to rest. Yeah, we just started like 15 minutes ago. I went out and bought one. Is, isn't that a... Yeah. I went to Walmart and theirs was 150 and I went to... Uh, Best Buy, I don't want to know. We got a break today, but it's a pain. Yeah. And that way I don't have to carry around that big laptop. You ever think you'd be saying, don't have to carry around that big laptop? I know. Mean, well, mine is. It's about twice the size of any of those. It's one of those with the big HP. It's one of those with a big screen. All right, so we're doing this problem on the board. If you decide to come in and join us, greatest common divisor and least common multiple. Did you send it? Oh, the one you showed me that you got wrong, but it's right. I think there's something wrong with the system, like you said. Actually, I think it's a conspiracy. Yeah. Wants you to live in the ditch. I used a different recording software when well, I'm using Skype, uh, Skype for business, so it's not going to do the delay. It's real nice not to have that delay. I called the uh, people that did, does the food jigger display. They said I shouldn't be having that problem. I said, well, I hate to tell you, bud, I'm having that problem. So I'm going to start with two. Why? Because they're both even. So two will go into 72 36 times. Two will go into six three times. Two will go into five two times. I believe 16. Two will go into 16 eight times. They're still what? 
Even Hubert. That's right, class. Thank you for that interaction. Two will go in 36, 18 times. Two will go in there one time. That'll leave 12. And four. They're both even. So we keep going. Nine and 82. Uh oh. What's wrong? Real man stop. Why? I'm sorry. I heard. No, no, no. What? Okay. Two doesn't go into nine. I know y'all didn't hear that, but I could barely hear it. Two doesn't go into nine. But what about other numbers? Well, what about three? Three will go into nine, but three won't go into two. So real math stops. So that is your greatest common divisor. Two times two times two. So now you keep going, and you focus on one, then you focus on the other. So I'm going to focus on the nine. Get it down to one. So three, three, and two, three, one, eighty-two. So now I've got the one right here, the little check mark there. Now I'm going to focus on the eighty-two and get it down to one. So what number can I use? Two. Forty-one. Ooh, it don't look good. Maybe 13, I don't know. I know 7 won't go into it, because 7 times 6 is 42. 5 won't go into it, 2 won't go into it, so that leaves 11 and 13. I don't think 13 will work, will it? 4, 5, nope. 41's a prime number. So, 41, 1, 1. So this is your common denominator. I'm sorry, your least common multiple. So let's multiply it together. You don't need a calculator. You just need to wait. Chill out. You can use your brain. We know that 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's what, 16? So put that 16 right here. And 3 times 3 is what? 9. And you know that's equal to 144. Somebody help me out. 144 times 40. 41. And that's where you need to calculate. That's awfully big. That's not, that's too big. What do you get when you multiply 144 times 41? But that may not be the right answer. Let's see. Because this box don't look like this box. So that means this box may be the right answer. This box may not be the right answer. So somebody tell me what 40, 144 times 41 is. 5,000. I'm sorry, what would you say? And I feel good about myself. I got it right. So I don't need to put smoke stacks on my truck. Okay? Let me know what smoke stacks are. Forget it. All right, let's try nerd. Somebody sent in. Now, I'll tell you what, before we do this one, we'll do this one again. Because I want to use these on what, today's lesson. I'm supposed to go into heart attack and cardiac arrest. Somebody's phone went off. Ah! So y'all do this. 72 and 212. And if you can do this one, then you're not a failure. If you can't do it, then you need to drop the class. Live in the ditch.
Yeah, I picked up my son Monday. And I went Monday. Yeah. Monday of last week after I asked you about that. Mm -hmm. Or Tuesday. I can't remember. Look. Wednesday, I asked you about it. Wednesday, no. I don't know when I asked you, but I had a lunch break on Tuesday, or yeah, it was Tuesday. And uh, I went during my lunch break and went up to Best Buy and bought one. And I picked up my son, and I done set it up at home. And he said, where'd you get that? I said, I said, I'm not telling you, but go ahead and say, I want one. He's nine years old. I said, you can have my LG tablet. All right. So I, he pulled that LG tablet out from the cobwebs. I said, you got to find a cord. You charge it. I'll delete it. You can play on it. And he did. I don't like those tablets. I can't see how people use them, but they used to them, so they can. Okay. All right, this one's kind of like the last one we did. So start with two. Why do you start with two? They're both even. 36, dang old 106. Both even. 18, dang old 53. Real math stops, doesn't it? No, three, maybe. No. So four is your. The greatest common divisor. I have to flip between this and that. Y'all just have to excuse me. Nice work. Now we're going to keep dividing to get the 18 down to 1. It's 53 prior? Yeah, because if you divide 3 into it, you get 23, and 23 is prime. If you divide 2 in it, you can't. 7 is 49. 7 times 7 is 49, so you can't put that in it. 13, no. So 53 goes right here. Now this is your... So that's 8 times 9 is what? Yeah, I'm sorry. 72. 72 times 53. I'm sorry, what? 38.16. That should be your answer. All right, I will say these are some real strange numbers. I wouldn't put these on a test, but I, I want you to be able to do them without a calculator. And the 72 times 53, you could do 720 times 10. No, that wouldn't work. I'm thinking. 720 times 5. Yeah. You could do 720 times 5. 720 times 5 give you 36, 3600. 3600 plus 3 times 72. You could do that. And for those of you that have no earthly idea of what I'm talking about, you could take this number right here and change it to 50 plus what? 3. And anybody can multiply by 10, right? Most everybody can. You just add 0. So 10 times 72 is what? 720 times 5 because 10 times 5 is what? 50. So that's how I got seven, 720 times 5. I got 3,600. Somebody check that. That's what I got there. And then 3 
times 72 will give you the 216. So 3600 plus 216 is 3816. You can do it that way. Uh -huh. Actually, it's called common sense. Well, that's that's how I that's how I teach my students when I do uh, basic math. Like you do it every day. Six times twenty-five. I ask you what six times twenty-five is. People read their calculator. I ask you what six quarters are. You tell me it's dollar fifty. Six times twenty-five is one hundred fifty. Six quarters is dollar fifty. Same thing. But people depend on calculators. So when they see this, they reach for calculator. When they say this, they tell me it's a dollar fifty. So I just tell students how to take whole numbers. See, this right here, that's why we stress in basic math the tens. If you multiply by ten and a hundred and a thousand, you can just about multiply anything. All you gotta do is just go back and remember that there's ten, there's five tens and fifty, so you multiply this by five and then add three times seventy two to it. I guess you could call it common core. I don't know what common core is, but I know what I've seen on Facebook, it's all screwed up. They don't teach you to break up into... Well, the ones I've seen, I don't see that. I've seen pictures on Facebook, and it's all messed up. And in fact, one teacher put it, and I said, this isn't common sense. This is screwed up. And she teaches mine. And I wouldn't have, I wouldn't teach it because it screws people up. Anyway, the lowest common multiple is 38.16, and you should feel good about yourself. So, oh yeah, I done made her mad. She's leaving. 38.16. All right, next question. Next homework question. Next question I had in the 155 question book folder. That was, I don't know which one that was, but 69. Look at all those 69s. One one, excuse me, one one sixty nine. there's 57. Let's do 57 first. Um, what in the heck is this? I've never seen this before. I've never seen this before. Jarrett is setting up chairs for his school band concert. He needs to put 270 chairs in the gymnasium floor in rows of equal size, and there must be at least two chairs in each row. Basically, he's doing multiple chairs. Yeah. Well, three times 90. Five. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do your multiplication tables. But that doesn't work because it's gotta have at least two. But you could do five. Five will be fourteen, won't it? Or five will be fifty, fifty-four. So six. This is a visibility. This is what is this divisible by? Go back to your divisibility rules I showed you. Okay? Let's, it's divisible by two, but you can't use two because it's got to have it the way you can use two. You can use two. So that would be two times 135. Or is it divisible by three? Yes, because add them up. Two plus seven is nine. Nine is divisible by three. How about four? Four could be, four times eight is 24, but that leaves 30. No, four's not. Five, well, it ends in zero. So yes, it's divisible by five. Six, no. Seven, no. Eight, no, because that's zero. Nine, well, three's divisible into it, so nine's divisible into it, so that'd be nine times 30. 10. 10 times 27. See what I'm saying? So what they're doing is asking you if something is divisible by certain something. And I don't know how do you come up with this out of all these different, I guess. 
You have you can? Okay. Okay, so nine times thirty. Uh twenty seven by ten. Ten by twenty seven. Oh my gosh. Three by ninety. No, this is not nine rows of thirty. Ninety rows of three. Okay. Six times forty five. Well six times five will give you thirty six times four. Okay, this is divisible by six. One row, you can't use that one because it has to have at least two chairs. Six by forty five. Six four, yeah, it is. One thirty by three. No. Five by fifty four. Two by one thirty five. 30 by 9. How many times have they asked 30 by 9? 2 times 135. 15 by 18. That seems like a big number, but you can somebody multiply it and see. That's, okay, so that was it. 46. That's not because 6 times 6 doesn't give you a 0. That's wrong. 6 times 6 doesn't give you a 0. Uh, 2 times 4 doesn't give you a 0. 4 times 2 doesn't give you a 0. You can't use 1. 18 times that could give you a 0. Okay. Is that it? So that's a question of multiplication tables and divisibility rules. I've never seen that question before. That must be a new question they've come up with since this is a new book. Is that a test question? No, it is not. The previous questions we did, yes, they are. So you probably will see this on homework and that's it. Next one. Let me delete these if you don't mind. Delete this one and delete this one. Now somebody's having trouble with this one. 69, I got three different people asking this one. So let's check it out. Determine the first, really? Three, seven, fifteen, and then it jumps up to like 563 or something. And now, do you remember the last time I seen Fermat's numbers? It was when I was at Clemson, and I remember them. But that's, I think the first one was five, seven, three, five, seven, and then it jumps to a bigger number. I have no idea. It must be in your book. So let's go up here. Oh, look, you don't even have to help me solve this. That's great. This is not a test question. The first number is what, three? Three, five, nine, seven, two. No, it doesn't go, does it go up that high? Must be five, then. I think it's five, seven, and something. Five, seven, and seventeen. I, it's been that long since I've seen it. Seven and it's prime. And well, then I have no idea. Seventeen. And I have no idea what the last one is. Two fifty-seven. Okay, the question is, why are they asking this? I have no idea, because you don't need to know it. Only thing you need to know is the five or six prime numbers I taught you, two, three, five, seven, 11, and sometimes 13, and you need to know how to use them. Okay, I haven't seen Fermat's numbers since Clemson. That was over 20 years ago. You don't even need to be discussing Fermat's numbers. Maybe they may be making some kind of Maybe they'd be making some kind of association with prime numbers, and but there's no sense in you knowing that. 5, 7, and 17, and 257, write those down. Put Fermat's numbers out beside it. Put homework question, not test. I'm not going to test you on that. Sorry about that. I didn't know that question was in there. I don't know why the teacher in charge would even put that in there, because you don't need to know that. So that's the answer to all of those questions. I'm not going to 
do any of that. Okay. We haven't got 5.2 yet, so. Oh, that's my question. I think I sent that question. That's me. So just delete that. Delete, delete. Now, let's take that first question we had. Somebody give me those first two prime numbers that we had, 72 and 656. So I'm going to go to my handy-dandy virtual whiteboard, and I'm going to write a problem on the board. No, I'm not going to do that because we haven't went into fractions yet. I'm going to end with that before today's over with. Let's go with two fractions, and we're talking about adding and subtracting fractions. This is 5.3. I skipped 5.2. We'll get back to it. I want to make sure we spend more time on adding and subtracting fractions, because that's where y'all you know, have meltdowns. To add or subtract a fraction, you have to have a what? You have to have a common denominator. And the common denominator is called the least common multiple. The thing, that big number, the second number of those numbers that we were doing in 5.1. So if I give you an easy one, like 1 over 3 plus um, 2 over 7. Now this one's pretty simple. The reason it's simple is because the denominators are prime. And whenever the denominators are prime, you can do something and get the common denominator. Now, I could teach you five or six different things to do, or I could just teach you one thing and you do it all the time. Okay, I'm going to teach you one thing, and that is finding the least common multiple. So three and seven. Three, one, seven. 7, 1, 1. So there's your common denominator. Now, I'm not going to write it as 21. I'm going to write it as 3 times 7. 3 times 7 is 21. So it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. I'm going to write it as 3 times 7 right here. And 3 times 7 right here. Now, how many times will this go into 3 times 7? That many times. 7 times 1 is 7. How many times will 7 go into 3 times 7? 3 times. 3 times 1, 2 is 6. Now, you could easily change this to 21. I'm trying to show you two different ways to look at it. How many times will 3 go into 21? 7 times. 7 times 1 is 2. How many times will 7 go into 21? 3 times 2 is 2. So whether you do 3 times 7 or whether you do 21, you still get the same answer. Now, what's 7 plus 6? And then 21 comes over. You do the top, and you just bring down to 21. You can if you want to. I tell people they can do both. You can either use this or you can use the BZ. One third plus two sevenths. And 21 is the common denominator. Use the big Z. 3 will go into 21. How many times? 7 times 1. 7 will go into 21. 3 times 2. So either way you do it, it's fine. I don't care. I know that this time, this, this type right here, if you're going to be in algebra later on, and don't say never because you never know what you're going to go into later, you'll see that more in algebra. Okay. Now, that's a very simple one. That's 3 and 7. 
A lot of you say, well, all you got to do is multiply the numbers. Yes, when you have two prime numbers, all you got to do is multiply them together. But sometimes you're not going to have two prime numbers. Sometimes you're going to have something different. Sometimes you might have 1 over 3 plus 5 over 6. All right, find the common, find your least common multiple. And I know there's probably somebody out there going, all I gotta do is just put six down. Okay, that's another rule you gotta remember. If the two numbers are prime and composite and the prime will go into the composite, then you can use the composite. That's two rules to remember instead of one. Let's see what I'm going with this. You can remember four or five rules or you can just remember one. Let's make things complicated and make it six rules. So, three and six. Three, one, three, one, five. Three, one, two, five. Two, one, one. Hey, there's my number six. So we put a six here, and we put a six here. How many times does three go into six? Two times one is. Two. Six will go into six one time. One times five is five plus two. Seven over six. Now you notice why. You notice I didn't do something that some of y'all were having a heart attack over. I didn't change it to one and one six. Why? Because simplifying is your, that's what you're wanting to do. Simplifying is not rewriting as a mixed number. When do you use mixed numbers? Well, you don't go to Walmart and ask for one and one six feet of rope. I mean, seven six feet of rope. You ask for one and one six feet of rope, or you ask for one and one six pounds of sugar, or whatever the case may be. You don't go ask for seven six pounds of sugar. You use mixed numbers when? When there is a unit of measurement involved or you start with mixed numbers. The old adage of math and science, if you start with mixed numbers, you what? You end with mixed numbers. If you start with decimals, you end with what? Decimals. If you start with proper improper fractions, you end with improper fractions. But unless you have depth, if you, unless you have directions that tell you to do this, this, or this, you just leave it 7-6. Okay? Now again, that's another rule to remember, or you can just remember the least common multiple rule. I must try nerd. One over three plus three over four minus one over 24. Okay, do that one.
So, again, you can say that the common denominator is 24 because you know that 3 times 4 is 12, and 12 is going to 34. Again, that's something else you can remember. Or you can just do 3, 4, 24. 3, 1, 4, what's this? 8, 2, 1, 2, 4, 2, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 1, 8 times 3 is 24. How many times will 3 go into 24? 8 times 1? 4 go into 24? 6 times 3? 24 going to 24. 1 times 1 is? 26 minus 1 is? Fractions is not hard. It's not difficult. Why is it difficult? Because you didn't know how to find the common denominator. That's what's difficult. Now, of course, we can throw another one up there. Well, I thought I could. Huh? Nope. That's not a unit of measurement. It's less than good as one. Um, let's go with two thirds plus one tenth minus three over seven. You just multiply them all together, that'd be 210. There you go. 3 times 7 is 21 times 10 is 310. 2 up to 210. That's the easy way to do it. No, it's not. I'd quit. But the main point is, do you know right off the bat what the common denominator is? No, you don't. Now, if you're one of these people that just multiply the denominators, that's fine. You do that all the time, but then you run the risk of making the problem what? More difficult because you're making bigger numbers. So don't do that. I have no idea what the common denominator is. That's why I don't do it. Instead of wondering about five or six different rules, I'm just going to write three, seven, and ten. Three, one, seven, ten. Seven, one, one, two. Two, one, one, five. And five, one, one, one. There's my ten. So it is two hundred and ten. You know the good part about this? You don't even need to calculate it. What? 210. How many times will 3 go into 210? Well, you take the 3 out. How many times will 3 go into 210? 70 times. 70 times 2 is? 40. So you didn't even have to use a calculator. I need to erase that because I want it out. Now, how many times will 10 go into 210? Well, you can take the 10 out. How many times? 21 times. 21 times 1 is 21. Now, of 
147, we'll go into 210. What's 10 times 3? 30 times. 30 times 3 is? I got 161 over 210 minus 90 over 210. And of course, 160 minus 210 is 70. So 161 minus 210 is 71. Look at that. You just did a very complicated fraction without using the calculator. I guarantee you somebody in here is going. I have never done a fraction like that before without using a calculator. And you know what's so bad about it? Is you all, all you use is what? Your brain. Let's do a nerd. We're gonna do these to your sick of them. You see, you ever study something so much you dream about it at night? Okay, well, you're going to tonight because we're going to do so many of these things and I'm going to give you so many of them for homework. You're going to have to wake up in the middle of the night and go do it on paper because you're doing so many of them. Yep, I've done that. I've, been, I've studied so much for classes before that I'll go to bed and it'll wake me up in the middle of the night because I'll be trying to do it in my head. You'll get there. Let's try a nerd. One over two plus six over seven minus one over 21. So you can multiply 14 by 21, there's your common denominator. 14 times 10 is 140, and 140 is 280, so 280-something. I can multiply those. Somebody multiply 14 by 21. See if you get 294. I could just use 294 then. Or I could do it the first way. 2, 7, 21. 7, 2, 1, 3. 2, 1, 1, 3. And 3, 1, 1. Hey! That's not 200 and whatever I say it. That's 7 times 3 is 20. Well, that's 42. Golly, I made fractions smaller. I didn't use that other little one I was thought I knew. And it made the problem, what? More simple. Because you don't have a big number to work with. How many times will 2 go into 42? We'll cover up the 2. How many times? 21. 21 times 1. How many times will 7 go into 42? Cover up the 7. 6 times 6. 21 will go into 42 2 times. 2 times 1. I'll do that one for you. So that gives me 57 over 42 minus 2 over 42, which will give me 55 over 42. All right, we're going to do another one. After if I get still writing.
Let's go with two over twenty one plus three over seven minus one over I have no idea what the common denominator is, I just know that. So. Class is over 10 to 10, right? Mm -hmm. We're working on that. I gotta upload another video so I can upload y'all's videos before the class next class comes in. <laughs> Go ahead and get the roll to my mat. Oh, there it is. Uh, Allie, Bennett, Bradley, Carter, Carter, she is here. Yes, yeah, she definitely know. Cromer, Edwards, Ellison, Erickson, Gilliard, Jacobs, Littman, Mass, Reed, Scott, Smith, Tucker, and Wilkes. Which one's Miss Wilkes? You sent me a question. Okay. Trying to learn names. It's going to take me a while because I'm terrible with names.
What was that? Was that a sneeze? Mm -hmm. Don't do it no more. Okay, I got those started. I don't know if they'll work or not, but Okay. This question says two over twenty one plus three over seven minus one over twelve. So you need to get a common denominator. Well, like I say, you could multiply all of those by 21 times 12. 21 times 10 would be 210. That would be 252. Something like that. Um, 210, yeah. 252 times 7. 1764. Multiply three of those together and get 1764, and you can go tiny. Well, that would be the hard way to do it. Multiply those three together and see if you get the number that I said that I won't forget. It is 1764. So you could do that, or you could just get a common denominator. I don't know if it is or not, but let's see. 7, 12, 21. So 7, 1, 12, 3, 3, 1, 4, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1. And that will give us 21 times 4. 84. I'd much rather have 84. Start to see where I'm going with this. You can't just multiply the numbers and just make up stuff. You got to do one one way and one way only, and that's find the least common multiple. Find the least common multiple, you can do the problem. You start doing your way. Good luck. I think I said 84. I can't remember. You'll have to excuse me. I have no short-term memory. I'm one of those people that have to say a phone number 15 times while I'm dialing. That's why it took me so long to get a math degree. All right, so 21 will go in there, what, four times? Four times two is eight. Seven will go into 84. We've got no clue. So we'll go over here. Let's cover up seven. How many times? Twelve times. Twelve times three is 36. Twelve will go into 84. Take the 12 out. Four times three seven times. Seven times one. 86 plus, I'm sorry, 36 plus 8 is 44. 4 over 84 minus 7 over 84. Dang old 37 over 84. Somebody check me. You can do these all day long. And we aren't going to do them all day long. But we got to make bigger numbers. we got to make bigger numbers so you can... Get discouraged and what? Quit. Because that's my whole purpose. My purpose is not to encourage you, but to make you what? Quit. So let's do a nerd. Minus one twelve. That's me all. One more. Mm -hmm. Mm 
I'm going to fix some hair off by this roof. My son had pig movies. Walt Disney movies on his mind this week. I have watched four movies with pigs and, well, two movies twice. They and Charlotte's Web. And then we had to watch another movie that made keep thinking about Dave that has his toupee on his head. Well, he's got his hair on his head. You ever seen the movie Dave? He's got this little brown patch of hair on his head. I'm talking. I'm finished. I hate it. My name's you. Finished? Oh, you finished a problem like that? You're supposed to give up and quit. Okay, I have no idea what the common denominator is. I would lean toward 144, but I'm not sure 36 is going to 144. I'm pretty sure it will. But we're going to check because we don't want a second guess. We could multiply 12 times 36 times 144 and do it that way, but I think I've shown you that's not the way to do these problems. So 12, 36, and 144. I know two will go into all of them. Six. 18 and 72. Two will go into all these. Three, nine, and 36. Up. Three will go into it one more time. One, three, and 12. And then three, one, one, and four. Two, one, one, and one. Two, one, one, and one. I'm sorry, two. Okay, so I've got 16 times 9. 16 times 9. I have to write that down for a while. Yeah. 16 times 9 is going to give you 144. So 144 is the common denominator. So here we go. 144. 144, and 144. 144, 100. That doesn't change. 36. Go over here and take out 36. 36 is 4 times 9, right? So take out 4 times 9, and that leaves you with what? 4. So 4 times 5 is 1. 12 will go into, that's 3 times 4, so cut that out, and that leaves what? 4 times 3 is what? 12 times 1 is 100 plus 20, I'll do that for you, is 120. And 120 minus 12 is 20. I guarantee you, I don't care who you are. I guarantee you there's somebody in this room that did just did this problem and they're like freaking out because they can do fractions and don't use calculator. Yeah, you can reduce it this time. 54 over 72 and then reduce that on down. The whole point is that you can do fractions. Now that's adding and subtracting fractions. Now, how much should you practice this? Probably 500 times. You should get as much practice as you can with that instruction. Uh, multiplication and division, 
That's a piece of cake. You can do those all day long. But these are the ones that's going to get you. I wish I could pull up. Has anybody got into uh, my lab flush yet? Has anybody tried? And you still can't? I was going to pull up some problems, but it's just sitting there. So, and I make that problems. I tell you what I can do. Let's do this. Since I can't get in there, this is something I know that y'all could never do because it would, you know, require extra what? Extra what's that word? Work. Yeah, it would be extra work. And some of y'all, you just throw that on me. Now you do adding and subtracting fractions. Isn't the internet great? And you can pull up any of these, which are going to be fairly simple. So what you can do is increase it a little bit. Put in the word challenging. That'll give you some more problems. Or a little bit more with us the same denominator. And then you type in different, oops, I'm trying to find three. But the whole point is that you can pull these things up all day long. Here's two, here's some. That's different, that's not different denominators. Well, they do everything they can to make this complicated, don't they? There's different denominators, but that's not what I'm looking for. Really? Okay, I'll just keep making them up. Well, when you got time, I ain't got time to sit here and look at every one of them, but sometimes you can go through and pick out. There's plenty of worksheets out there for people that want to find it. Didn't I put unlike denominators? I thought I did. Those are real simple. I was trying to find, there's some, there's one right there you can do, common denominator is 50 right there, common denominator is 54, 56, common denominator is 60, those are pretty simple. Those are pretty simple. But we can do a mixed number right quick because you might see some of those in your homework. I was wanting to find one. Those are pretty simple. I don't think I'm going to find any. Those are the same denominator. Those are the same denominator. Well, if you, if you notice, most of them are pretty simple, so I'll just make up another one. Let's go with a mixed number this time. And then I'll do a whole number, because that's where somebody will. Let's go with three and four fifths plus one and one seventh. Minus one and one third. Now there's several ways you can do this, but the first way I would tell you to do it is change them all into improper fractions. Because the other two ways can get kind of confusing, and I don't show confusing methods. So 
change them to an improper fraction first. Then you can quit. Then you get discouraged. Throw your pencil down. Make it pop. Throw your book in the floor. Y'all ain't never gotten mad at your math homework before? Y'all Well, that's just because they don't give you a little green check mark. That ain't because you're doing it right. I know, it's really, it's really affecting me. Well, I tried to do it and I couldn't get in. I tried, well, I can't get in now. I told you this was wrong. What's three times five? Plus four? Nineteen over five. Seven times one? Plus one? Three times one? Plus one? So we got to find the common denominator of three, five, and seven. Three, five, seven. That's pretty simple because they're all prime. Three, one, five, seven, five, one, one, seven, seven, one, one, one. So 15 times seven, they go 105. Somebody check them out. What? Of course it is. All right, now five will go into 105. I don't have any idea, so I'll go over here. I've got five, how many times? Seven times one is 21, Hubert. That's right, class. 21 times 19, I can't do it in my head right now, so I do 21 times 19, and I'll come back to it and fall down. Seven will go into 105, take seven out, how many times? 15 times, you were 15 times 8 is going to give you 15 times 8, 120. And then don't write. 3 will go into 105. 5 times 7 is 35. 35 times 4, I have no idea yet. But I won't do it in my head. So let's just see what oh, you can do. This is easy. What's 25 times 4? 100 or 100, depending on where you're from. What's the difference between 35 and 25? 140? 40? 35, 10 times 4 is 40. 40 plus 100 is what? 140. What's 35 plus 4? Or 30 times times 4? 35 times 4, what is it? How much? 140. All right, right here. You can do this. You can do this. What is 10 times 19? 190. That's right, class. What's 190 times 2? 380. And then 1 times 19, 380 plus 19. Or what did I say? 380 is 399. Somebody check me. What's 21 times 19? It's a mirror. I told you this was 140. Now 400 minus 120 is what? 280. So take one from that, it'd be 279, but I'm going to leave 280 in my head. 280 minus 140 is 140 minus 1 is 139. What'd y'all get? 139 or 141, which one is it? Oh, I, I subtracted. I'm sorry. I subtracted. Okay. 400 plus 120 is 520. 520 
minus 140 is 380, minus 1 is 379. Is that what you got? Now you started with a mixed number, so you might want to end with a mixed number. So 105, 315, so that'd be 3, and 15 away from 79 would be what? 64. So 3 and 64, 105, somebody check it. I have no idea, but I'm checking. Three times one of five is three fifteen. Three fifteen. Three six four. Six four over one of five. I, was, I don't know. Y'all check me. Somebody take three seventy nine and divide it by one of five, and then take sixty four and divide it by one of five and see if you get the same decimal. The whole point is we've done five or six problems today with fractions and hopefully y'all are not saying I can't do fractions anymore all right let's do another one. let's do one that you might see in the homework and on the test I have to look to see what time it is because y'all are getting fidgety okay no I'm not gonna try it because I gotta I gotta do my my uh, what you call it the uh, what you call the thing I already called the roll right all right, now let's talk for a second because I got to tell you what kind of uh, email I got this weekend. Okay? Let me stop this because we're going to go over something that I went over at the beginning of the class.